In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to access waypoint information on the Garmin G1000. What we'll do is go to the waypoint list by rotating the outside FMS knob, and we'll start off by looking at airport information. Here right now we can see we've got KGAB, but what I'd like to look at is KGAI, which is Montgomery County Air Park. So I'll hit the center of the inside FMS knob to activate the cursor, and then I'll screw through the letters using by first uh, hitting the inside knob or rotating uh, the inside knob and then going across letters using the outside knob. So I've got K, G, A, and now I want the I, so I use the inside knob and hit enter, and that gives me Montgomery County Air Park. Now keep in mind I just searched the airport via its ICIO identifier, but you could also search things through the facility name or entering the name of the city, and it's got a spell and find feature which will help you find things faster. You can see as I was putting the letters, it was searching through and finding the best uh, matches it could along the way. And I can also always hit the direct to button at any point in time if I want to plan my flight from what I just searched directly to uh, that location. So here we can see uh, Githersburg Airport, and there's a few things to keep in mind. First of all, that when we start the engine up and we go to this tab for the airports, by default it's going to start where the airplane is currently located. But once you load in a flight plan, this should automatically go to the default of the destination airport. And for a flight plan with multiple airports, it's going to default to the airport which is the current active waypoint. And we can see here we're on Info 1 tab. We've got all the information on the airport like the name, the symbol, if it's public, the location, it's Northeast USA, we've got the elevation, some of the fuel and services, the UTC time code, here we've got runways and we can cycle through to see the different runways, the length of the runway, the surface, and here we've got different frequency information. And we can scroll through this by hitting the center of the FMS knob. That activates the cursor and then we can rotate we can rotate the outer FMS knob to go to different fields. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind one important thing, and that is the orientation of this map here for the airport information is always north pointing up. But you can change the orientation of the map in the map display page, and I've done that uh, already just to show you. Keep in mind the orientation of this with north pointing up, and if I rotate or excuse me, if I go back to the main map page, you can see that the orientation of the runway changed. And so it's always important to keep in mind that the airports on the inf airport information tab is always north up. So let's go back to that. To that and here you can see it. <coughs> I can expand upon this information by hitting the Info 1 tab soft key. I go to Info 2. Now I can see the airport directory information. I can see the hours of operation, noise abatement procedures, airport obstructions, pattern altitudes, runways, lights, notes. Um, we got some phone numbers over here. And this is basically expanded information that comes from AOPA. So if we hit the Info 2 key again, we go back to Info 1. And if we hold down the clear key, we can go to our map. Now another thing we can look at is if we have an emergency situation for whatever reason we want to see the nearest airports which are kind of treated like waypoints we can hit on either the multifunction display or the primary function display to get the nearest list so here on the primary fun primary functional display we can hit the nearest button and then we've got a list which we can scroll through using the inside rotating FMS knob and that will show us all the nearest airports with the appropriate symbols that we could fly to and some information such as the runway lengths and the communication frequencies so that it's quickly accessible to us in the cockpit during an emergency. Now let's look at how to get the nearest information for airports on the multifunctional display. And what I'll do is rotate the outer FMS knob until we get to the nearest tab and select airports. Here we can see the list of nearest airports, so I'll press the FMS button to activate the cursor, 
and use the outside FMS knob to cycle between this list where this little arrow over here points to. And notice it gives me a dashed white line to the destination airport depending on where we are on the list. And if we go to an airport that has multiple runways like say KIAD or Dulles International, I can hit the runway button soft key and then I can rotate the inside FMS knob to cycle between the runways that I want to choose to go to. I can hit the frequency button here to get the appropriate frequency and if I hit the enter button it loads it up here on the, san on the uh, standby so I can just switch it. If I hit the approach button it gives me the approaches to the runways and the same thing here if I go to the airport button this lets me cycle through airports rather quickly. So airport runway frequency. Alright, so we can see the list of nearest airports here. We can see that we've got Frederick, which is an uncontrolled airport. We've got this private airport. We've got a heliport over here. Uh, what if we want to modify our search criteria so that when we look for nearest things, even in an event of emergency, let's say I only want to land on a hard surface runway that's at least 2,000 feet in length. I want to basically filter out some of these search results. What we'll do is get out of this screen by holding the clear button. We'll then use the FMS knob to get us to the auxiliary page for system setup. Now if I press the inside FMS knob, I'll activate the cursor and using the outside rotating FMS knob, I'll cycle through until I get to nearest airport information. And if I rotate the inside FMS, I will tell it only hard surface runways. And I only want them with a length of 2,000 feet or greater. So if I get out of this and hold the clear button, and we rotate the FMS knob to go back to the nearest. What you'll see is that list is now different. You don't see that heliport anymore, and you don't see that restricted airport uh, anymore. And if you look here, you'll see it's hard surface, and the length is at least 2,000 feet. So if I hit the airport tab, and we cycle through, you'll see that these are all at least 2,000 feet. So everything here is a hard surface and at least 2,000 feet, and so we basically will satisfy this restrictive uh, criteria on where we want to safely land, even in an emergency.